welcome to my 100th subscriber special. Um, I wasn't actually quite sure how to do this, like what what I should do for my 100th subscriber special, but turns out I managed to hit three birds with one stone. What I mean by this is, for starters, I'll be versing Sucker for Jessica, and he is the most famous YouTuber I've ever got to battle on my channel. So. That's the first thing. Second thing is this is actually my first ever Wi-Fi battle I ever done, like ever. I know I uploaded my first Wi-Fi battle to this channel, but the one I uploaded as my first Wi-Fi battle was actually the first Wi-Fi battle that I managed to finish. This battle is not a full battle. It, um, my opponent does decide to flee towards the end of the battle, so that's why I never called this my first. And on top of that, um, the last thing is, this was the first team I ever built. Back when Heart Gold Soul Silver just came out, the second it was released, I made an in-game team. And when I started competitive, I used that team, and this was the team. This um, this was the very first team I ever made. And back then, I had like an old icy wind Gengar and leftovers Donphan. I was using Typhlosion. That's how you can tell it was my first ever team. Typhlosion was my starter in Heart Got Soul Silver and I stuck with it so and obviously you got the Red Gyarados from the Lake of Rage so this was the first team I ever made and I used this online one day I came across a guy who I actually thought was a girl and then we started battling and asked if he had a DS he said yes we battled once or twice I can't really remember I I deleted this um, save file and it took me ages to recover so I'm glad I got it now and I know it's not 5th gen, but I'm going to go ahead and reveal his team because, like I said, he does flee towards the end of the battle, so you won't get to see his whole team. So this is the team he bring. So let's get right into it. Um, He's going to lead out with this Zapdos. Now, I'm not too sure what actually happened, so I'm going to go from what I think was happening at the time. This Zapdos uses T-Bolt and goes before me, which tells me he could be scoffs, but back then I was not running max speed Gengar. I was running an Icy Wind Focus Arch set, so he's going to deal quite a decent amount of damage to me, and I'm going to go ahead and go with an Icy Wind. And now after the speed drop, we both decide to switch out here, and the fact he switches out before me tells me that even after the speed drop he was faster. He was predicting some sort of explosion or shadow ball. He knows my set, because I'm sure we battled before, so he kind of knows some of my sets. I switched into Donphan to take a T-Bolt since it was choice. But he decides to double switch into Swampert because Swampert is like a really nice reliable switching on Donphan. So I set up rocks and he goes for the Toxic this turn and he poisons this Gyarados. Um, so yeah, he's he's now got this Swampert in and he's now poisoned my Gyarados. So therefore, I was like, ah, okay, well I was expecting a water move because I don't want Donphan to take a waterfall or surf or whatever he has. Turns out that's not the case. He carries the Toxic and the Stealth Rock here. So he sets up Stealth Rocks. Now, I went for the close combat here because I think I wanted to take a toxic or something. And then this does a fair amount of damage. It's not it's not too bad. But then for some reason he decides to toxic. And I think that's just a way to get damage off of me. But that was a mistake because <laughs> you do not toxic or do any sort of status to a Pokemon with guts. So now this close combat is going to be dealing a crap ton of damage. And I'm pretty sure he lives this, because I remember watching this video like a couple days ago. I'm sh yeah, he did live it. He lives it on like 0.5 HP, I don't even know. I'm now at minus 2 special defense, and considering minus 2, Heracross takes that very well. I'm proud of it. He's now going to finish this thing off, because he has nothing that he can switch in on a close combat. Everything's pretty much a 2 hit KO. So... Why not? It's just going to kill off the reliable Swampert, which did its job in there. And it's up rocks, it poisoned two Pokemon. He's dead. Um, He's going to go ahead and bring in this Zapdos, if I'm correct. And what he does is he U-turns here. I'm pretty sure he does anyway. And he does go before me. So this does tell me his Scarf Zapdos is faster than my Scarf Heracross. So I know now he's Scarfed, but now... He's, he's going to be taking those rock damages pretty badly, so he's going to decide to put his fortress in here, and he's going to try to spin away those rocks. So, 
Back to square one, Donphan vs Fortress. Um, Donphan can take Fortress on for days. Like, if it was a Swampert, that's a different story. But we're both going to spin here. And what I'm realizing is that this Fortress actually is not healing in any way. Like, my Donphan's had loads of items in the past. He's had leftovers. One point he had Quick Claw just for lols. And then he had. He has Cust Up now. I gave it the Cust Up Berry. But. I go for the Earthquake to get some damage off, and he goes for a layer of spikes, and I can see he's actually not recovering at all. Now I'm back at full here, so I don't like the fact he set up spikes, and I'm going to go ahead and Rapid Spin. And he's going to go ahead and use Earthquake, because I'm pretty sure he just wanted to get some damage off on me, because he knows I'm at full. He he now knows that I got rid of his spikes, so he's in a position where he just like, he's, he's in a losing battle here, because I'm not only spinning away the stuff, but I'm damaging him. So he stays in here, and he goes for another um, layer of spikes, if I'm correct. And I'm now just gonna keep damaging and attacking. So this turn he's up the spikes. So then I'm pretty sure this is the turn I go for the rapid spin. And after rapid spin, I'm gonna be at full health again. So he starts to bring in stuff that can actually do potential damage. He brings in this Machamp, and this Machamp is gonna obviously start to hack the shit out of me. So. There goes the Diamantic Punch, um, that's going to do, I guess, a fair amount, not too bad. I, I can't even remember this Dolphin's EV spread, I'm pretty sure it's different. Now I've EV'd it so differently, I managed to get up the rocks, because now my Dolphin is just, it's just pro, it can take special attacks as well as physical, and it gets that cost tap, so it's just awesome. He's going to stay in and go for another Diamantic Punch. Um, I did set up the rocks, so I'm happy here, but in this turn I actually hit myself and I'm like, oh god damn it, you could have used Earthquake. So here I can guess he's gonna kill me. I don't know what he was thinking here. Maybe he thought I was gonna switch out, or maybe he saw this as an opportunity to spin since he has no other chance to spin on me since I have a Jolteon, Gyarados, Scarf, Typhlosion, Gengar. He probably thought this is his one chance to spin, but sadly as he bring the fortress in, I do Earthquake it and it does die. So that was a very odd play, but um, this game was definitely around two to three years ago. It was, it was such a long time ago. I just remember adding this guy on Skype, and then we had like one or two games on the DS. And I, I really appreciated the fact that this guy gave me my first ever game on the DS. But I had no idea who he was, and only now I worked it out. So yeah, um, he finishes the Donphin on off and. Basically, I saw a chance here to start setting up Dragon Dances, especially after that small put in our Raw. So I set up a Dragon Dance here, and he does go for a Diamantic Punch, so I'm going to be taking a Confusion and Poison. At this point, if I set up another Dragon Dance, it's a good game, but I was so sure that his Zapdos was going to come in at this point, I, I didn't want to risk his Zapdos just coming in, because I don't even know if the Zapdos can actually live the rocks. It turns out he doesn't switch to Zapdos in, which I don't know if he should have, because I go for the water ball here, and I see this damage, and his health just keeps going down. And I actually did crit him, so <laughs> I, I I'm I'm sure that matters. I'm sure it wasn't a one hit KO, but that's unfortunate because now I think that must have annoyed him because this is around the part now he decides to flee. Basically, he brings the Zapdos in. The Zapdos goes down to very red health. It just lives on like negative one HP. I know he's pressured into using attack, because whatever attack he uses now, he has to stick with that attack, otherwise he can't come back in later, because he dies to rocks. He uses T-Ball, I knew it, I go into Jolteon, and he just keeps T-Ball in, and I set up a sub, and at this point he just flees, because Jolteon behind the sub, and the rest of my team, Scarf, Gengar, whatever, he knows he's lost here, so he had three Pokemon left. Um, sadly, that was like, all that happened, the first game... If I remember correctly, it was a very short game. I think I got cocky and I just set up like a bunch of Dragon Dances on him and he missed a few moves and it was a good game. So this is the best game I have between me and him and he was a good opponent. I really enjoyed our match. And thanks for the 100 subscribers. That's like pro because that's the whole reason I'm doing this. I hope you enjoyed. Anyway, I know it wasn't much, but I, I want to at least say I've versed some pretty well-known people. So yeah, um, that's it. So... Peace out, thanks all, and...